Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing good. Uh, welcome to the second part of my uh, How to Stasma tutorial. Today I'm going to run you to how I prepare the tracks so I can play them live afterwards. It is definitely the most boring part of the process, but it's the most important. First, we have our empty project over here. There is only uh, like the dummy clips, the additional break beats. What are we going to do is to take a track uh, that I haven't played yet because it's brand new, it's from uh, last week. It's the Voltage Song Gangster Tracker Mix from my Voltage Songs EP. So it's cut into four parts, main drums, breaks, bass, synth and samples. You can see here we have the same name. So let's start. Up, go. Each is going where it should go. The tempo of this track is this one, 169.6. So let's rename this with the right BPM. For those who don't know, when you do this, as you can see, there is a the play here become blue, and when you play this scene, it will put the tempo, it will put live tempo at whatever you reason there. This is extremely convenient uh, when you have to make transition or when you want something to switch from one tempo to another. So now we have all our different parts. As you can see, there is a blank at the start. So nothing here is warped yet. When you set the tempo and then warp long samples like this, uh, the good thing is that it will warp it at the tempo you've put. So when you know the tempo already, you just have to select everyone, warp, done. Everyone is warped at the right tempo. Now we have to set the right start point for each of those. It's a two. Up. I'm using a trackpad, so I will be terribly slow, which is a good thing. So you will have time to see what's going on. You can also do it here, huh, actually. Okay, so now it should be good. Okay, now I will loop all of those because most of the time I want those multiple patterns that I will create to loop if I want to play them more than once. Now it will loop, but it's a giant loop that's the size of the track. Here I can decide the length. So let's go for eight, each of those, eight bar. Okay, let's see how it sounds. So yeah, I can have this pattern play over and over again as many times as I want. No, uh, as it's the intro, I know that uh, it's divided into two 16 bar patterns. So let's go 16 for this one. The next pattern is supposed to be 16 as well. So what I do from here is I, I will select all those and uh, Command or Control D for duplicate. Now I have the same, I just have to switch this around up. This I can also do it from here when I know where it is. Up. Here it's 18. So. Yep. As you 
can see I was wrong. The because the, the bridge starts here. So what I'm gonna do is to take back this to eight. Here I will have first part of the intro on the first scene here a uh, uh, eight bar pattern with the vocals in and then I'm gonna duplicate this again to uh, select the bridge. Told you it would be boring. So now I have the intro. The end pattern of the intro. I have this to play as long as I want. When I feel like it, I can go to the bridge. Okay, the track really starts after this bridge. Let's keep on duplicate and selecting the right uh, area. I can see that it's 42 is the location where, it, where the, the audio is back in. So I just select 42 as the position everywhere i'll keep the 16 bar i guess it's good So it's with this type of pattern that I like to play a lot of breaks on top. So I have my crossfader here. You can see it moving down there. Uh, you can see A is the break beat, main break beat, and B is here. So all the, what I call the bonus beats are all down here. Up. Here they are commanded via MIDI from the MIDI fighter. Each of those breaks has a MIDI note assigned corresponding to one of the pads of the MIDI fighter. So now I will uh, play the pattern, the main pattern, and jam with the breaks. This is the first way of uh, doing lots of breaks by hand and having fun on stage. Now, uh, one of the other things that I have showed you last time is to take some parts of the break beats already edited from the track and slice them up to be assigned to the main controller pads. So here is our normal break pattern. Now, in the one I have duplicated down there, I'm going to look for time stretch snares, rolls, or any other edits that I can replay on the fly later. So I'm going to look for a few of those. Bye. 
Okay, now the secret is, as you might have seen before, the global quantization is 1, 4. Meaning, if I press, even if I press like crazy uh, on, on one trigger, it will always go like this. So, as the main is 1, 4, if I want the break to be faster, I can just select of them and in the launch uh, menu over here you have global quantization or you can select another one so 1.8 is perfect for this type of application with the main break being on 1.4 basically those are faster you can re-trigger them faster, but this one, the main one, is still 1.4, so it's less easy to fuck up when you switch back on to this guy. So let's go to the next one. So let's check the numbers. You can see we are going to 58. So let's set the start to 58 for this whole line. Okay. Let's play this one. As you can hear, there's more uh, weird edits in the, in this part, which means it will be less easy to play using its own breaks without breaking the dynamics. But as there's more breaks in there, we can use those here. This one was not very fun. So up, let's go this one, one eight, and let's check for uh, funky, breaky parts. <laughs> This one was not very fun to play with as well, so let's copy up. Mm, what do we have? Let's play back with the pattern that we had before with those new breaks. In those type of parts where uh, there's already too many edits, that's the one where I just use a little bit of the bonus breaks that are with the crossfader or a little bit of the FX uh, on the master channel. So basically that's it. Uh, I'm going to uh, work a little bit more on this uh, without showing you because I guess you, you already uh, understood how it works. And I'm going to film a little jam.
Thank you.